everybody. Donna Woods at Photonic Health. And this version of Health Made Simple is with my co-founder, Brian Owen. And we're going to be talking today about horses' feet. And specifically, we're going to be going into laminitis and founder. Now, this is a pretty big topic, and we can't cover everything there is to cover in it about it in 30 minutes or so. Um, but we just really wanted to um, explore it a little bit more in depth so that you guys, if you're out there dealing with it, that it's something that you're going to be able to troubleshoot and also to be able to handle and better manage. Um, and give your horses more uh, relief. So why Brian is here um, chatting about feet is because as most of you know, he is our chief engineer. And with that engineering brain of his, it's all about angles and planes. And when we got into this business, he quickly learned that if the feet aren't right and the teeth aren't right, you can't get the rest of the horse right. Correct. And when and so he went and did additional studies, and he is an advanced applied equine podiatrist. And so it's a very fancy term. Um, he does basically corrective trimming, and he specializes in difficult cases. So welcome, Brian. Thank you. Hello, everybody. So um, Brian, we recently, uh, you recently went out on a call um, and the horse was down and it yes. it was fresh laminitis. And so I think during that call, there were some things that you sort of discovered that some additional information that people, if you they knew it, like what was one of the biggest things that if people knew about laminitis that they don't know that they should know? Well, I think I know what you're going to, but uh, one of the biggest thing that people don't understand about laminitis is, is the definition of laminitis in itself. It is basically an inflammation to the foot. We all, re we all know that it, typically it's in the front of the foot, but it can be anywhere in the foot and it's where blood flow is not going through and it's just swelling up and it's causing pain in the foot for the horse. Okay, perfect. And so um, as a equine podiatrist, what are the biggest challenges that people face with this condition? All right, so let's let's start talking about that. So the first thing when we hear laminitis is that it is an inflammation of the foot. You know, some people go crazy and say, oh, it's founder right away. It's typically not. It's typically some form of laminitis and the people typically go into panic mode. And right away, we're worried about, is the horse going to have to be put down? Am I going to have a huge expense going on now because I'm going to have to take them to like a equine hospital or this horse is going to be out of commission for three to six months and what's going on. So all this fear is going on inside the body and it's a traditional method of doing things, putting them in clogs, putting them in shoes, isolating them, changing their feed. It just becomes a big, big, what do I do? Right. So um, what do you do? Well, from our side, it's fairly simple. Because I, and, and I think what would help everybody is if I give a little bit of an exp explanation of what's happening. So when a horse's foot, example being a, a horse's foot, and this is two different feet, so that's why they look different. Um, when the horse's foot steps on the ground, it goes through what's called five phases of, of, um, of, of contact. So it's hitting with the heel, then it's putting its weight on, then it's counting over, it goes over breakover, it comes back and releases. So that's the five phases of footfall. And why that's so important is because inside the horse's foot, there's there is no valves or arteries. So it's just a systemic pressure from the heart of blood going through the foot. But when the when anytime you put any kind of a pressure somewhere, it causes what's called hemodynamics or hydraulics. In other words, 
let me give you a really, uh, really example that everybody understands. If you have a clogged toilet, and even though you add more water to it, it doesn't go down the drain, right? Correct. So that's the same thing that's happening when you get inflammation to the foot. Is if you get, and typically we get the inflammation is to the front part of the foot, right, right in this area. And that swells up and it doesn't allow the blood to go back up the front of the foot. So it all goes back up the back of the foot. So then you start having where the dermis or you're not getting proper blood flow to blood to the area to nourish it. And then you get to the point where you can actually have chronic condition where you can have tendons and ligaments release and then our ligaments release and then you get into founder. So that's what that all happens. Now, the simplest thing is how do you just get rid of the inflammation? Correct. But can you do me a favor? Can you mm -hmm. hold that foot up again, please? And can you maybe open up the inside of it and maybe just sort of we'll give everybody, yeah, yeah, let's use that one and give everybody a visual. And can you point to where there's typically the inflammation? So like this what is are a, we look, what are we looking at? Yeah. So this is the bone here, 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 and here. This is the coffin bone. This is the navicular bone, P2, P3. This is the horn itself. So you have the external of the horn. You have the medium, which is white. And then you have the dermis, which is in here. This is where the laminitis typically happens is in this where this dermis is. So here's the bottom of the foot. And this is all cartilage. Everything back here is cartilage. So blood okay. comes down the back. It fills the back of this. And then it goes through the sole comes up and then after break over, it comes up the front, goes around the coronary band and shoots back up the front of the foot when everything is normal. Okay. Now we're gonna look at this one. This All is right. a laminitic foot or actually a foundered foot. So you can see the, here's the front of the coffin bone. Yeah. There's the horn. So this is all the laminitis that happened in here where it starts to build up the pressure. So now in this foot, what ends up happening, you see the navicular bone is terrible looking. Right. None, of the, none of the blood could go past this foot because all the pressure was pushing down onto the sole right here. So you see the sole is very, very thin. So that's right. stopping the blood from going and going through. And this is where this becomes pain because this is where all the nerve endings are in a foot is around the dermis of the coffin bone itself. Awesome. That was a great visual. That was a great visual. Thank you. Thank you for that. So through your explanation, what you're really saying is laminitis, <clears throat> if left untreated properly, can eventually turn to founder Yes, and can be very caustic to the integrity of the horse's foot. Correct. So the, for us, like the whole, well, I think any horse owner really, when you're dealing with laminitis is how can we effective how can we treat this as effectively and quickly as possible because i think if i'm not mistaken like the quicker we get it under control the healthier the foot's going to stay and whatnot correct yeah and, and you want to really get it on it immediately because you know you can go from chronic to or you can go from acute acute meaning remember in those three phases acute means like i put the horse out on pasture all of a sudden they seem like they're lame that's a, that's a quick thing that happens. So that's acute, just right. a metabolic thing. They shouldn't have been on the sugars, whatever you went too fast. And it's just a quick blow up of the foot. And it's not something that's chronic. Then there's where you're, this is ongoing quite a bit and you're always kind of tender foot. That's, you know, uh, intermediate or medium type. And then chronic is where they're off their feet. They're down. They're not wanting to step. They can't move forward. They got that, that look of where they're stepping on their back feet and pushing out their front feet. So, right. you know, that kind of stance. So that's when you're really getting into trouble. So you want to catch us in the acute phase or what we like to do is you do it. If you know you have a, a horse that's prone to this is doing it as a, a weekly basis to take care of the the issue with the horse so it doesn't become a problem. Okay. So, so and we all know like laminitis is a, uh, acute inflammation and it's typically caused by them ingesting 
a food source that does not agree with their body. That's yeah. how I'm going to label it because I know that there's a lot of different schools of thought in the nutrition world and we're not we're not experts in that. We're also not going to go down that path. But the path that I'd like to go down is okay, my my horse is exhibiting these signs as a horse owner, what is next and what do I do? Yeah. First thing you always want to do is you want to have an x-ray if possible because you want to rule out that you have a rotation to the foot. And be careful because the foot itself or the hoof wall is very plastic-like. It can move. So I've, I've seen many, many x-rays that look like this and the foot's sitting at about a five to seven degree angle, but the, but the front end is pulled way away. And what it is is that this horn is just pushing away from the pressure. The foot has not rotated. You need to have it where the foot is actually rotated around this coffin bone, around P2, a P1 around P2, to show that it's actually a founder going on. So if it's still just in laminitis state, it's easy to take care of. You do one of two things. It could be either mechanical or it could be metabolic, meaning Mechanically, is it's just not a foot that has been trimmed correctly, and you have a long toe, low heel, and so all that pressure is like pushing on your fingertips when you, every time you're, the horse is stepping because the foot's too long. The brake okay. lower shouldn't be here. It should be back about here. So then it wouldn't have that pushing on. So that, that tears at that dermis when it happens. But more than likely, what we see in an acute stage is it is metabolic and the easiest easiest thing to do is light therapy okay red itself red and near infrared re reduces inflammation so i'm gonna go back to my clogged toilet so you, now you put something in there to dissolve the clog you take your thing you flush the toilet water goes in guess what now it flows through same thing happens when we put the light on the, on the foot, is it reduces the inflammation, the blood flows through, and it takes care of that inflammation that's happening on it and everything starts moving again. That's what you're looking to do. Okay. So um, I want to make a couple distinctions. Number one, if, it's a, if it is a metabolic, obviously the, the horse has to be taken off of whatever is creating that metabolic issue. So that's yes. an obvious. Um, and then you can move forward with utilizing red light therapy uh, to make that correction. Um, but what let's talk about mechanical because what I, I don't want to give anybody any misperception that if you have a mechanical laminitis situation, that by putting lights on it, it's going to take care of it. It's going to mask it. So yes, okay. it's going to help reduce the inflammation. They might feel better, but the mechanical part is still there. So you have to take care of that. Okay. And you guys all know, and, and I tell this to horse owners all over the place, you know what a good looking foot looks like versus what a uh, bad looking foot looks like. I mean, it's just... Well, you know, well, we know that because that's the world that we live in. So right. we sort of live in this little equestrian bubble called Ocala. And so there's a lot of people that that don't know necessarily what a good foot looks like. So let's talk about the shape of the feet, mm -hmm. um, because I think that's probably one of the biggest things that we encounter or that you've encountered Um is the front feet should have a different shape than the back feet. Right. Front feet should be more round. Okay. And they should be more upright. So they're sitting at what's called a 54 degree from the from the vertical back. So that was the front of the hoof will be at about 54 degrees. All right. All right. Uh, the back feet are going to be more oval and they're going to be at a 45 degree to the ground. So in other words, what I'm talking about is just from here to here is 54 on the front, 45 on the back. So on the front, they're going to be more upright. On the back, yep. they're going to look more like this. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So if the front looked like they got back feet on them, then there you probably have a mechanical issue already going. Okay. So first thing for those of you that are watching, um, 
Look at your horse's front feet. Are they round? Look at your horse's back feet. Are they oval or is it reversed? We actually right. see the reverse quite, quite a bit. Often. And if that's the case, then you need to get that addressed. And when we say round, just so you guys know it, we're talking about when you're looking at it from the top down, that you're seeing a, this more of a round shape versus this shape that's on this one. You see how much you can see the difference. This is mechanical flare from here to here. Difference. Right. This horse other foot should, should be cut to the same as this one is. Right. So that's what you're looking at. Right. Okay. Awesome. So now that we got that and we're dealing with mechanical flare and you or mechanical laminitis and you've dealt with you've dealt with that, you've made whatever corrections need to be made um, and you're going to do it very carefully or your yep. farrier is going to do it very carefully. Um, how do how do people implement and incorporate red light therapy to get them over over this? Well, we have two means of doing it. You can do it with the handhelds. And we have it in our book. There's a whole section on laminitis. Yeah, I will say it's not. I mean, there's you do have to put an effort into it, and you have to be out there working on it. And that's where you take and you put. I like to use our ProGen Two light, and I do a lot of work right on to the bulb going across itself, all the way around the front, and then we do the tink points. Then we have a series of points, and you do those each of those points every. For the first start, when you first almost twice a day, you want to be doing this for like two or three days till they start getting better. So if you have a red light handheld device, you're going to put it directly on the front of the hoof wall. Right. Front of the hoof wall. Right there. Okay. And, and you can do, and, and you're going to move it all the way around. Do they need to do the entire hoof wall or nope. just, just in the middle? Just the middle and at about a 45 from the front on each side. Okay. okay. Basically where the um, coffin bone would sit. Is yeah, if that I open correct? it up to the if I open it up to the inside, what we're trying to do, which one's the good one? This is the good one. We're trying to get the light to come right in here. I'll put a light up there so you can see that it's there. Right in here, put the right way. So that you're shining into that coffin bone. Okay. Right at, the, right at that point. That's where all the, this is where all the pressure is right in this front part here. Okay. And that's what per we're trying to get into. Per perfect. So you, people that, uh, people can do that as often as necessary to keep the horse out of pain and keep the inflammation right. down. Ting points and acupuncture points are a little bit different situation in that those only need to be activated every other day every two correct? to every two to every three days yeah every two to every three days so i really want to make the distinction of if you're going to be illuminating the hoof wall directly which we highly recommend you do um you can do that as often as necessary three four times a day and um but the acupuncture points and the ting points only need to be illuminated once every other day and that's if you have a handheld device so yeah. And what in the you... case of the person that we just were out at, she thought she had to do everything two to three times a day. And it ended up happening is that ting points never or the points never shut off so that it stops doing what it's supposed to do. So okay. you do want to do the two separate. You're 100 percent right. OK, so now we have a much easier way of handling this. And I know that we've had several clients that have actually overcome laminitis and founder with this product. Um, so you want to show abscesses. and ab yes, abscesses. Yeah. Absolutely. So what, what, what do we got here? What's so as a podiatrist, so, I, easier? so as a podiatrist, I said, I've got to make this easier for people to do. Cause if you make it easy, people are going to do it. So we made our half wrap and it's just pretty simple. It's got a light board on the inside. It's shaped kind of a round, rounded shape. And you just simply put it onto the hoof wall like this, like a bell boot, press the button and the lights all are on and it's doing all this work for you. Nice, okay. nice, nice. So you just put it on for 10 minutes on each foot and the horse may pick his foot up, may paw, please don't leave him alone in the, in the stall. I mean, 
we don't want you to damage this, so I want you to be there by the horse. They may look, because you know, some, sometimes they will want to lay down, but typically once this gets on, you'll notice within 30 seconds to a minute, they'll start to yawn a lot because when the pain starts going, which this is going to take away the pain, it's taking away inflammation. Now, the red is really doing a lot of the work for all the ting points around the outside. The okay. near infrared is what's really getting deep into this foot wall, into the hoof wall. And okay. that's what's really starting to get that inflammation to come down. Okay. Awesome. 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 And um, so, Brian, that's one of those things that we developed that was designed to make it this therapy easier for horse right. people, right? Correct. Um, and so what other ways can they utilize this device? Well, that's the interesting part is I designed this for the horse, but my gosh. For the feet, we, right? For the feet, yes. Yeah. But then we started finding out that you could put it up above each of the joints as a bell, as a bell so it can now move around without damaging the pad. So I can put it above the fetlock. I can put it above the knee. I can I can put this over the back of the cranial part of the neck, over the withers, different things. And then we found that, oh my gosh, it works wonderful on little dogs and cats. Yes. So uh, <laughs> the, the usage really expanded compared to what we thought we would do. For example, one person came back and then I tried it. It was so cool is that we put two of them together and put them over the, on each side of the ears around the, uh, the head. And then yeah. all of a sudden, we call it kind of the cranial crown is what I gave it a name. They could they could pick up the horse's feet and and, and do them and they wouldn't kick anymore. Right. That's awesome. That's awesome. So let's go ahead and summarize um, what we talked about today. So laminitis, if untreated, can turn into founder, which can be life-threatening. Can be, yes. Laminitis can either be metabolic or mechanical. Yes. We got to take care of the underlying core issues in either one of those first. So we've got to take care of the food situation first before it's going to be able to overcome it. And if it's a mechanical issue, the corrective trim needs to occur in order to uh, start the healing process. Yes. Yes. Uh, people need to really be aware of the shape of their horse's feet. The front feet should be round. The back feet should be oval. And if they're opposite, you need to get that corrected, however that looks like. Correct? Yes. And once those steps have been taken, then red light therapy can be administered to, uh, to overcome this condition. Well, red light therapy can be its final to heal the situation and really get it to the point where may, hopefully this won't come back again. And it, right. it, and, the, and guys, remember, just because we fixed it doesn't mean you want to stop the therapy. Especially a horse that has been through laminitis or founder. I recommend all those kinds of horses to go through at least once a week treatment of the lights on them to keep them from happening again. Because they're prone to have this problem. Awesome. Awesome. Yay. Yay. So um, the, the one thing that just I wanted to chat briefly about was, can you talk briefly about like what happens you and I think you touched on it just like for a quick second, but can you talk about what lamin, you've already talked about what laminitis is, but it's the tearing of the, can you explain that? Because I don't have sure. all those terms down. Sure. Let me let me go through that one more time on that part. So laminitis is an inflammation typically to can be anywhere in the foot. Many, many uh, veterinarians actually use the word founder, which scares the bejesus out of most people when they use that word. But most laminitis is are an inflammation that is caused between the stratum medium, where this is now called you see this little golden line right here. Yep. That golden line is part of the stratum internum, which is actually that means that's that's a dermis that's attached from the hoof wall to the coffin bone. Okay. And that is where you can see these little holes in here. That is where the laminitis happens. Okay. Okay. This outside stuff is 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 horn, like fingernail. Okay. 
all right? This is the lie part. So think about on the inside of a hoof wall, it, it'll actually have like fingers or ridges coming down. Okay. okay all, like, like all my four fingers. So right. that's all coming down this hoof wall. Yeah. The same thing is, is in the coffin bone that has a mating four fingers. And that's it's that connection which kind of holds it a lot of it there. It's not holding it, but that's how it makes its connection from ripping apart. Okay. All right. So it's it's they're called tubulars, and it and as those grow down, they kind of grow down inside of each other, and okay. that grows down until it keratinizes and then becomes horn. Okay. All right, and that grows down from the coffin bone down, or not? Okay. I'm sorry, the coronary band down. Okay. This one's better. All right. So, and so with the laminitis, what happens is those tubulars start to separate, separate they come apart. Uh, so I got okay. the tubulars from the from from the coffin bone, the tubulars from above, and then all of a sudden they start to rip apart, uh, just like that. And so that's not so. Even if you take care of the horse's symptoms, like say we've got you know our horse shows up, it's got symptoms. We call the vet. We get X rays. It's laminitis. We take care of the situation and we're illuminating every day. And say in five days, my horse is back to normal on the outside. Mm -hmm. On the inside, he's still, really, he's still in the healing process. Correct. So, um, how long, like, how long should somebody continue after the symptoms go away? How long should they continue to focus on that before they can maybe back off a little bit? I think that's a really good question is that it takes a minimum of minimum of three weeks with a proper environment for anything to heal. Okay. So three to five weeks is probably a good number. Now, I want you guys also to continue think about that if your horse's foot what we do in the podiatry world is we give it a grading from zero to 10, 10 being a 100% perfect. There is no 10 feet out there. You can't take one that's rated at a three, have laminitis, and laminitis is gone in three weeks and start doing hunter jumper on it right away. You right. just can't do that because you're going to have a mechanical problem happen because you compromised that area, that tissue between the two. So you got to be smart is that one of the cool things about horses feet is that they can heal themselves as well, as long as they have the environment and the ability to do so. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. This has been, of course, so educational on <laughs> horses feet and, and red light therapy. And, um, I look forward to chatting with you again about another fabulous topic. So awesome. Thanks. Thank you, Donna. Thank you for watching this edition of Photonic Health Presents Health Made Simple. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications for all new Photonic Health videos.